Thanks a lot. So, yeah, so I'm a mathematician at uh, EPFL in Lausanne, so Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne and uh, Imperial College London. Um, and, yeah, so l let me start by trying to tell you, if you want, how, how comes I became a mathematician. So you would think, so actually my dad is a mathematician. So you would think that since my dad's a mathematician, obviously I always knew that I wanted to be a mathematician, but that's not true. Um, so when I was in high school, I guess, like you guys, uh, I didn't, I mean, I was always interested in science. So it was completely clear to me that I wanted to be some type of scientist, but you know, it could have been computer science, could have been physics, could have been chemistry, could have been basically any kind of science. So I was always, you know, reading all the popular science journals and sort of devouring them and trying to, you know, whatever, see what's going on and learn about stuff. Um, and so then when I came to university or when I got to the end of high school and had to choose a topic at university, basically I thought, well, since my dad's a mathematician, I probably shouldn't choose math because that would be awkward. And uh, so I chose to study physics instead. And so I did study physics, but of course, so that was at the University of Geneva. And there at the time, at least, first year of physics is basically first year of math plus a few physics courses thrown in, right? Like classical mechanics and quantum mechanics or something. Um, and then in second year, it kind of diverges. And so, so then since I also liked math, I kept on sort of taking the math courses as well as at the same time as physics courses. Um, and then sort of the same happened as with uh, Hiraku, I guess, uh, <laughs> which is that I, I realized that I wasn't any good at the experiments. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so clearly experimental physics wasn't for me because I would just mess it up. And so that's no good. And I really liked the theory much better. And then the theoretical physics, I found it more messy. I realized that I was always kind of more interested on the actual mathematical side, right? And, and in a way, I felt that, you know, like in mathematics, I felt like I could really understand something. You could actually understand what's going on completely, right? Whereas in pretty much everywhere else, well, you had to take some things on trust, and then, you know, you go by intuition or by analogy or something, you come up with an argument, and it seems quite convincing, but, you know, you always feel like it's not completely, you know, can I really sort of put my name to that argument and, you know, <laughs> like really defend it? Uh, whereas in mathematics, once you, you know, if you've proven a result, if it's a proper mathematical proof, you can really, you know, it's as convincing as it's sort of humanely possible to be in some sense, right? And you, you really feel like, in some sense, things become obvious at some point, right? So that's kind of the magical thing about mathematics, is that there are things that it seem like really hard and completely incomprehensible, and then you think about it for a while, and it sort of becomes more and more obvious. And then at the end, you're like, yeah, sure. I mean, of course, yeah, that's, that's the way it is, right? Um, and, and so it's, you know, it gives you that nice feeling of really understanding something profoundly, somehow, like in a, in a sort of genuine way. Um, and so then I kind of switched more and more to mathematics. I mean, like, I did a, my PhD was actually in physics as well. So it was still in the physics department. But my PhD advisor was really, I mean, in pretty much any other university, he would have been in the math department. So it was really a PhD in math. Um, and somehow the topic was also a bit funny. So at the time, so my area of mathematics is basically probability theory, mainly. Um, but at the time when I was studying, still, you know, I had basically no idea what type of mathematics I would want. To, to do my PhD and I was kind of, you know, interested in various aspects and many things. And of course, as a student, you have absolutely no idea of what's actually going on in research. Um, and so I really didn't know. But I knew that I didn't want to do probability theory because, uh, <laughs> because at the time there was basically no probabilist in Geneva. And, you know, there was one probability course 
that was being taught an introductory course in the first year by you know some guy who didn't actually like probability or didn't do probability or something, and so it was you know not done in a very inspiring way. Um, and then in my I don't know third year or something, I had followed some other probability course, but it was really it was more on the physics side. It was given by a statistician from CERN. And so it was very much more sort of experimentally focused. And again, it was not the type of probability I was interested in. So for me, probability was that. And so I was like, okay, so that's certainly something I don't like, but there are lots of other things I like in math. And well, here we go. So, so, that's <laughs> so you see that you never really know where things actually take you in the end. Right? Um, and so, so maybe in terms of you know, since we're supposed to give some kind of advice or so. Um, um, I guess, you know, one of the main advice is, or I don't know if it's advice or words of wisdom or whatever, uh, is that, you know, you just never know. I mean, many things kind of at the end of the day come down to luck or coincidence or things like that, right? Um, and in some sense, you just need to, in a way, stay open and kind of recognize your luck when it kind of presents itself also, right? And sort of be, uh, be willing to catch it when you see it. Um, so, so for example, I mean, I can tell you one story, which is that, so I was always interested in, um, I, I sort of remained interested in computer science or in coding and programming. And so I did actually develop some software during my, during my studies and continued to develop it later on, even after my PhD. Uh, and so normally that would be bad advice to do that, right? Because you, you, know, you have to remain focused on your work and if you spend half of your time sort of develop some software, it's kind of completely unrelated to math, it's not gonna help you. Uh, and so it sounds like a kind of bad advice to try to do two sort of completely different careers if you want in parallel. Um, but so that piece of software that I was programming, so it's a sound editor, so it does, you know, you do like signal processing and stuff. And so because of that, I knew about uh, wavelets, for example. So wavelets, it's some, you know, technique decomposition that's used in signal processing. Um, but it also happens to be a mathematical tool that's used on the mathematical side somehow in harmonic analysis. Um, and so much later on, at some point um, in my research, I sort of came across something and like you needed an idea of you know, how to solve a problem. And you know, I realized that actually wavelets might be useful there. And it's something that you know, if I hadn't done that software kind of on the side, completely independently, I just wouldn't have known about wavelets basically, or well, I wouldn't have any sort of intuition about you know, how wavelets behave and what they're useful for, what they do, right? Uh, and so there's an example where I did, you know, something sort of stupid in the sense from a career advice perspective, um, but then, you know, it turned out to be super useful. And then that was, I mean, probably used for probably sort of my most important piece of math that I've done. Um, so I, I guess, yeah, so I guess that's sort of the general advice is that you know, there's no recipe for success or something. You have to kind of make your own way. Um, and basically, you know, being in some sense, having the optimistic attitude of, you know, sort of keeping your mind open and looking out for things and sort of taking opportunities when they present themselves, that's sort of just the general, you know, positive attitude to life. Uh, that's useful not just in mathematics, but in you know pretty much every part of life. Uh, but it is something that you know I think uh, is sort of good to cultivate if you want. Um, but I think I've spoken too much already, so maybe I'll stop here. Thanks. <laughs>